engrave this thing in stone, this theft of the wealth of the nations of the earth. They want to cement it. They want to solidify it. And they want to, right now, they're just busy trying to keep the ball rolling just so we keep seeing poverty grow, our job security is intact, our relevance will be intact, our power and control. So all these high uh, political off, all these people, these politicians, politicos, okay, they're, they're there with these elitists, these, these hypocrites, these mooches, these leeches, and the money printing class. They're working in concert. They're colluding. They're collaborating against the best interests of the American people at large. And we've got to care about the best interests of the people at large. Not only what Jesus said, he said, whatsoever you do or fail to do for the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. Okay, but just that knowing that your own self-interests are at stake, that you can't neglect others. And you can curse God and say, well, damn it, God, why would you give me a conscience? And I just wish I could just divorce myself from uh, the, uh, the, the sufferings of other people, this invented unnecessary suffering that other people go through. This fear, a very real, tangible form of fear, this financial insecurity. Remember, that's a roof over your head. That's the food in your belly, okay? That's your water. That's your heat. That's your cool. That's everything. That's driving your car, your energy needs. That's everything to you. So your freedom is entwined. It is inextricably involved in this economic mass, mire, this muck, okay? And so the political thing, that's just about how we're going to spend your money, Right? The government, they wouldn't exist if they weren't taking. Right? They take taxes from the people, from you, from me, from all of us. And then they decide how they spend those taxes. They're, that's theft in and of itself, right there. I mean, you know, I mean, the Bible was full of talk about this, right? I mean, they hated the taxpayers back in the day, right? That nobody could understand. Why would you ever want to hang out with them, Jesus? You know, we get this, the Levi, right? The tax collector. Levi, now, now we got levy taxes, right? So it, the terms from the Bible are incorporated in the world of today. It's all very relevant. They levy your taxes. Levi, that's where it came from. This guy, Levi, who was a tax collector. But Jesus said, no, look, this guy, he's repentant. He, he's admitting, he's confessing that it is theft, you know. And, and if I've taken more than I should have, then, you know, I'll pay it back with interest, you know, is what Levi said. So he was very repentant. I believe I got that right. Maybe it was Zach... Uh, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. I, I get the tax collectors a, a, a little confused, I, but I'm pretty sure there was this, there was a couple of them, and I got that Levi character. I'm pretty sure he was a tax collector. Sometimes I get ideas mixed up in my head, but just check it for yourself. But uh, Zacchaeus, yeah, Zacchaeus. Um, there was a couple of them, but um, you know, so uh, so God forgives everybody. Tax collectors, yeah, it's like the mafia extortion. So you know, but we take from the house. We have got these social welfare programs over here, and maybe they don't even understand why the social welfare programs are set up. I get it. There was a time when I thought, well, what a noble job that is. Maybe I should look into being a social worker, looking after the needs of the poor and all this. These misfits that don't fit in and and everything, you know, and that. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of was reminded me of myself. You know that I, I feel like I don't fit into this scene, nor do I want to. This scene blows, man. It's evil, through and through. I mean, we need an entire change, 180 degrees change. Okay, and it, it's tough. It's a paradox because, you know, who will tell you they don't uh, love money? Okay, they're a liar. A liar would tell you they don't love money, and also a liar would tell you they don't hate money in some way. Okay. I'd like to see it abolished myself, but in the meantime, until it is, yes, I love it. I love to pay my bills, and God understands that kind of, you know, I need it um, to survive, and so God understands, and he forgives all of us for this, but we have to be honest. We have to admit what's going on here. We have to simply be able to define the difference between progress and regress, okay, because society at large, the civilized society we used to have some 50 years ago, to some degree, although they kept trying to stir the pot and make trouble, wars, they were starting everywhere. They always need this to be relevant and just to keep people distracted. It's a diversion. Uh, it's a um, deflection from their own criminal, evil, diabolical behavior. Okay, so don't focus. So you can't be focused, for example, where you should, at the money printing class. Those are the ones. At the, at the end of the day, they're the most powerful entity in the world is the money printers. 
Okay, they're the ones who the who the sycophantic politicians are supposed to represent us. That's the only power we the people have is through the politicians. And if they're sold out, if they're sycophants for the money printing class, what the hell do you think is going to disaster's not going to happen? Give me a break. Of course it's going to happen. And that's the state of affairs today. They keep increasing this debt. They keep on this trajectory. Don't stop us. No, no. Don't muzzle the ox while it's feeding, threshing. Okay? Kick the can. Keep this ball rolling. Push this envelope right as far as we can. As far as we can. Isn't that what it's all about? And so is it any wonder that our economy is in tatters, that our social and political status is in tatters, that we have all this vast, great division in, in America and all over the world, these problems. I mean, from the nationalists to the people that uh, are out there. I mean, you know, I'm going to get into talking about the NFL when I talk about current events. But, I mean, it's just, it, it's satanic. Remember, the devil's in the details. Satan's getting a big belly laugh. Anytime he sees he wants civil war, he wants war with nations. Whatever he can muster up, he wants us to go to fisticuffs. Whatever it takes, he wants animosity, animus, hatred, vitriol, division, okay, it's important, and it wants us to stay in confusion. Because if you're in confusion, you stay ignorant. And if you're ignorant, you're stupid. And you're disempowered, you understand? Power comes with being certain, be having a logical mind saying, no, I disagree with you, and I'm let's right here and now, let's do the math. So I can prove that you're the illogical one, you're the unreasonable one, you're the deceived one, and you're the wrong one, okay? Not to make me somebody, okay? Just to make sure that we know the difference between facts and fiction here, okay? And let's set it straight. Let's just be honest about this thing. Let's define progress, for example. How do you define progress? Social, political, and economic progress. How do you define that? It's a rising tide of prosperity across the board. It happens naturally with true capitalism. True capitalism is free market. It's supply and demand. And progress is very cut and dry according to that law of supply and demand. Okay? And what happens is whatever currency you start with in this game called capitalism, it steadily increases in worth. And the only time it might dip in worth temporarily is if there's a disruption in the supply chain. So I think I make that as clear as I possibly can to everybody, okay? That, so you understand you're empowered with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, with the facts, with the mathematics that can back it up, okay? So anybody that's telling you otherwise is either deceived or a deceiver or a blithering idiot, okay? That's it. That's the only options they have. They're liars, deceivers, deceived, or blithering idiots, okay? That's the only choices they have. You don't have to tell them so, but you can just be certain that your argument will prevail because you're walking in the light. You're walking the truth. You're willing to get to the bottom of things. You, you're willing to work with nuts and bolts, mathematics, logic, reason, okay? And say, here's why it works that way. Because we, the people, we find easier. That's a civilized society. That's a collective, right? Humanity at large. Uh, is a civilized society. We work together. We find easier and easier ways together, all of us, not just a select special interest group over here and one over here and one over here and one over here that all benefit from the direction things have been going, okay, with the debasement of the currency. This is the method of operation for the theft of the wealth of the nation, debasing your currency. But it's got to work for everybody, okay? And you find easier and easier ways to produce the things you need, fundamentally, supply the things you need. And then you end up making a, uh, a, 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 an oversupply, okay? You've got an abundance of supply, too much you're making. So what happens? The price goes to zero, okay, over time. That leads to freedom, that the system doesn't break down, that slowly it just all merges together where we're going to work with a bounce in our steps, fully free, absolutely, utterly free, all of us, and a song in our, on our lips, and joy in our hearts, okay? And the system works way better. We're, we're producing higher quality stuff. We're very much more innovative, okay? And we're using the earth as God's playground. We're building artificial reefs for the surfers to get their hearts, you know, their hearts to their hearts. They can surf to their hearts, contentment. Okay, we can do whatever the hell we want. Whatever you can dream of doing, we can do it. And we've done so many remarkable things already. But being free and doing it, now that's a whole nother story. We're not free. 
We're bound to these evil money masters of misery that work on no logic. They don't want to do the math. They don't want to be reasonable. They don't want to be honest. They don't want to be fair. They don't want to be just. Okay, because in their minds they lose. So they're evil. So they could be unwittingly evil. It's all they're going to the same place. They're going to Hades. Because they'll get judged. Anybody that lives their lives is if they're not going to answer to their owner someday is making a big, grave mistake. I guarantee you. That's arrogance. Okay, you think you created yourself? Why? Because you had free will choice and, oh, you were so smart and noble and you made this choice and you're so smart and should be exalted. All this crap. It's antithetical to how the mind of God works. Those that humble themselves will be exalted. So if you want to be exalted, you got to be humble. you got to be contrite. You got to admit your own failings and faults. And when somebody's right and you know it, you've got to admit it. Otherwise, you're lying to yourself. And that's like lying to the Holy Spirit of truth. We all have equal access. Nobody can say, well, God didn't come to me, but did you ask? Did you ask if there is such a thing as a spirit of truth? That God is real, that you're a created being, that you don't know how to create anybody, neither do your parents. You couldn't make a person from scratch. What do you know about making yourself? It's a miracle, it's like magic. Okay, it's a mystery. It's it's just creation. That's the nature of the beast. We're a part of something big, and this thing goes on and on forever. So we've got to wrap our minds around what seem now to be radical ideas, like this idea of all of us being born free. Okay, and what I mean by that is that you're not born beholden to the money masters of misery. Okay, that this whole idea that oh well, money was just a brilliant invention. It was Einsteinian. It was it was to facilitate exchange. Now instead of having to buy the whole cow and freeze it, you could just buy a quarter of the cow and and you have a smaller freezer and the meat's not going to go off, right? I mean, yeah, that's what they started this whole thing with. That was the pretext. That was the pretense. No, it was a method of to steal from you the wealth that you, was yours. It belongs to you. As we make progress, that wealth belongs to all of us, not just some of us, not just select special interest groups. No, it belongs to all of us. So it might sound like a radical idea, but why? When we can all accept somebody being born with a silver spoon in mouth, we don't resent them. We say, wow, I wish that was me, maybe. Maybe you're a little jealous, but I'm saying that we can all be born that way. And prove me wrong. Has, have, has humanity, show me a time in history when humanity was allowed to be free and the system broke down. This whole idea that we're going to become decadent. Yes, I know Victor Hugo. I know what he said. But does Donald Trump think that about his kids, that they're monsters because they were born with a silver spoon in their mouths? No. And our paradigm would be so different that what Victor Hugo said about that, the prosperity making monsters and the adversity making men thing, okay, would have no relevance because the paradigm from birth is entirely different. So the idea that we're going to be these self-serving sluggards, okay, decadent slobs, lazy pigs, okay, is nonsense. It's just nonsense. But yet, it's the prevailing attitude, okay? I meet more people that seem to have that attitude. Oh, well, that'll never work. That'll never happen. Well, according to the Bible, it can and will happen, okay? And that's what we should be preparing our hearts and our minds, our spirits, our souls, our bodies, our whole reality for that. Dramatically different from this reality. Dramatically different. Dramatic, 180 degrees, I call it. Radically different, profoundly different. Okay, that's what we need to sink our teeth into. Will you stop going to your job? Is your job important and you're going to stop because suddenly you realize that you were born rich and everything becomes free to you when you want to take a cruise or you want to live in the Fiji Islands or you want to live in Europe or you want to live here or there or the next place and there's vacant housing everywhere, anywhere you want to go. Is that what you're going to do? You don't want to just sit around the house all day and drink alcohol, maybe sit on the beach and drink booze. All Is that what you want to do? I mean, do it as long as you want. But I mean, if it gets boring, it gets boring and you want to go out there and do stuff. You want to contribute. Everything's been given to you. People are out there and they're productive and they're giving because they want to be appreciated. They want to be somebody not only in the side of men, but in the side of God, their owner. So it's not our lives at the end of the day. It's God's life. Okay. Yes, we're all individuals, and we all have free will choice and all that, okay? But at the end of the day, he will decide where we go from here. And none of us know when our number is up, okay? That's a fact. We don't know when our last breath will be. So it's free insurance. I mean, when you trust God, it's not about religion. 
It's just about getting this free insurance. I mean, who would turn down free insurance? I mean, he's not going to reject anybody that comes to him with a contrite, humble heart and says, I've been wrong my whole life. I was an atheist or an agnostic. I didn't believe. But, you know, are you going to turn me away? No, he's not. He's going to brace you. He's going to, it's going to be like the prodigal son. He's going to put the robe on you and he's going to slaughter the fattened calf and put the ring on your finger. And you, although your brother might resent you, who's always been a, a righteous dude, he's wrong to do that.